All right, I finally got around to reading Little Garden. The Grand Line was set up to be this like really dangerous location, right? For like a hundred chapters, we were getting so much hype. It's like the Grand Line is going to be really dangerous. It's going to be really scary. You're going to want to prepare because things are going to go down. And so far, the Straw Hats have been relatively fine. They've, they've been able to handle it. And for a while, I was thinking like, oh, the, the Grand Line isn't so hard, right? Laboon wasn't that tough. Whiskey Peaks wasn't that tough. But like Whiskey Peaks was literally an island full of uh, bounty hunters. And the, and the crew just took them all out extremely easily. So, you know, maybe we're just a lot stronger than, uh, than I thought. But that being said, like, Vivi is still worried. I would be too. Because everybody's hyping up Little Garden to be this location that, like, you do not want to go to. And meanwhile, the Straw Hats are just vibing. Like, they, they don't care. They're just relaxing. It's like, don't worry about it. We got Luffy. We got Zoro. We got Sanji. Usopp is there too, I guess. It's like, we're fine. We're fine. We're going to be all right. And yeah, I mean, as we enter Little Garden, we see that it is, uh, like, essentially Jurassic Park. It's just like a prehistoric dinosaur island it's a strange out there concept but it makes sense for it to be this like really dangerous thing because almost nobody besides the weird ones <laughs> like nobody besides luffy sanji or zoro would have survived uh little garden because it's like this dinosaur island not only that but there are like two giants that are just always clashing whenever the volcano erupts and i mean if the dinosaurs aren't gonna get you the giants probably will. And these two giants that are fighting are from like Elbath, the, the land of giants, which is when I noticed that Oda uses one thing to reference another. Like we were referencing the Grand Line before we got to the Grand Line. We're referencing Elbath, the land of giants and how like Usopp and Luffy want to go there. Despite us probably not going there the next arc, there's, there's a lot of pride in this one. We have Zoro and Sanji competing to see to see who hunts the biggest animal. We see Luffy and Vivi just like running out and having an adventure of their own. Meanwhile, Usopp and Nami, the more grounded characters, the more almost, uh, the more human characters. <laughs> As the most human characters try to stay on the ship, they know it's bad if they head out there, which I mean, to be fair, it is pretty bad out there. Because even on their little boat, they run into a giant who is very nice, actually. They're, they're pretty kind. But if they wanted to kill you, they could have. Like, they are huge, and the average person probably can't take them on. If they wanted to kill you, they could have done it. But we find out one of the biggest flaws of Little Garden is the fact that the log post takes way too long to position. So if you want to traverse the Grand Line through this route, and if you get stuck in Little Garden, we're going to have to wait until the log post repositions itself, which could take, like, days, weeks, or months, or years, maybe. It took a long time. I just, I, I remember it took way too long. Like way too much time that they could not afford. Probably shouldn't have broken that eternal log post, am I right? Now that I think about it, you know, now that I think about it, Luffy didn't have to break that eternal log post. They could have just like kept it in a drawer somewhere. They didn't have to smash it. Expensive. You could have sold it. You could have sold the eternal log post. You know, as a pirate for navigating the sea, you would think that would catch a lot of money, right? Like that, that'd be worth a hefty penny. One of the things that I noticed is that like Luffy, Zoro, Usopp, and, and the Giants have like this very unique style of ethics. I don't really know how to describe it. It is way more complex than my, my little pea brain could understand. But it's interesting that there is a specific honor in, in fighting. That despite not having the best odds or going up against a stronger opponent, if you are in a 1v1, there is like an honor system to, to not get in that, you know? Just respect the honor of the duel, which is very interesting. We saw that back in like Baratier, where Hawkeye just like obliterates Zoro and Luffy does not go in there until it is over. In this scenario, the giant is hurt and they, they understand that they should not go in there. Like they should not fight right now because it is pretty bad for them. And yet there is this honor system. So the giant, despite being wounded, still goes into the fight, which is when I noticed something. We're going to get a little bit sidetracked. I realized a weird writing quirk. And once I tell you, I don't know if you want to hear it. Once I tell you, you're going to notice it a lot. Ready? Ready? It's the fact that they have to delay Luffy from fighting. 
In Whiskey Peaks, it's a little less obvious and pretty well done. Everyone is like eating and enjoying themselves and then they black out and stuff happens, right? Luffy is naturally delayed from a fight. In Syrup Village, Luffy literally knocks themselves out for a few chapters before someone wakes them up. In Arlong Park, as soon as Luffy like takes two or three swings at Arlong, Luffy's feet get stuck and then they drown, delaying them from a fight. In Little Garden, a giant places a giant rock on them, delaying Luffy from a fight. You get you see you see the pattern? You see the pattern? In Orange Town, Luffy is literally locked up. It's like, no, no, you got to sit in the corner. You got to sit in the corner and wait your turn. Everybody else is fighting. You got to wait. And I'm just going to notice that. I'm just going to keep on noticing that. I'm, I'm on the lookout now for it. I'm going to be on the lookout for it every time it happens. Here in Little Garden is also the first time I realized that there is a lot of lightheartedness in stressfulness, right? Like, we've seen it a lot. We've seen, like, Luffy using Arlong's teeth, like, mid-fight. As it goes from, like, a life or death, very serious situation to, like, a ha-ha, look, I got your teeth. And so sometimes the humor works, and then sometimes I think the humor kind of misses a little bit. Like, here, everybody's about to die. Everybody is very close to dying in Little Garden. And we still get that, like, lighthearted Luffy just, like, running around kind of vibe. Meanwhile, it's like, no, Luffy, wait, you gotta focus. Everybody, everybody's gonna die at Little Garden. Okay, for Little Garden, though, we got introduced to Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week. I just accepted that a lot of characters are gonna be goofy, but, like, Mr. Three's design is, is out there. Especially the, like, giant number three on their head is like, oof, that is a haircut. And we also got Miss Golden Week, which we hardly see a lot of, which I think sucks because I really liked Miss Golden Week's design and their ability is just way cooler. Like Mr. Three has the ability to turn everyone into wax. And you know what? They do it effectively. They can make like a lot of wax and there's like this complex tower thing. So, you know, it's very interesting, but it's still not my favorite. I'll be honest. And while we do get like Miss Valentine and Mr. Five, I'm kind of glad that we got other villains. Because back in Whiskey Peaks, they got rid of them in like a second. <laughs> in like one panel, they were done for. You know, here, Mr. Three is technically a threat, but they're a lot more comedic. Versus Miss Golden Week, which has like a lot of sass in, in what she says, is very much a threatening character when they use their ability. I'm sorry, I can't stop thinking about it. Like, I think Miss Golden Week's ability is just really interesting. They have an almost like death note level ability to control someone's emotions and willpower just by like getting them to touch a color. That is insane. By like touching a color, you have lost all your agency. Like that conceptually is a very threatening villain. Ah, oh, it's a shame we didn't get to see more of them. I hope we get to see more of them sometime. I like that there are also aspects that show, like, the story is still here. We didn't abandon plot lines anywhere. We, we got smokers still listening in on the situation. As they overhear a conversation between Sanji and a crocodile, through a very bad frequency snail, all we hear is, like, straw hats, psh, uh, Baroque works, psh, uh, alabasta. Through this, like, low-frequency snail, which I like, it could have just been a phone. It could have just been a phone, and nobody would have noticed. Like, nobody would have doubted it. But I love the fact that we don't just get a phone. It's this, like, weird snail receptor thing. And, you know, luckily post-fight, they actually do get a second eternal log pose. You know, maybe don't break that one. <laughs> Again, you can keep it. You can sell it if you really want to. You don't, you don't, you don't gotta smash it. You don't gotta break it. What if Luffy just, like, broke that one, too? Then what would we do? One of the things the Giants mentioned was the fact that people have died here before from waiting so long. So maybe, worst case scenario, you can find someone else's log post if it's somewhere around, if you can find their body, you know? So worst case scenario, if you find somebody's corpse, maybe they have a log post that's already centered. And you know, if the log post stopped you, the other thing that probably is going to stop you is this big goldfish, which is like an island eater. It is like the size of an island. Most of the sea creatures of the Calm Belt and even Laboon uh, were really huge conceptually. Like you can believe that they're an island. Luckily though, the like giants help them get through by like making a giant hole in the goldfish. Oh, that poor, poor goldfish. 
It does make me wonder, though, if there are islands in the Grand Line that have just disappeared, just entire islands gone, because some sea creature just went in there and has eaten it up. We get a pretty comedic history of the giants as we see how they actually came around to fighting on this island. It's super cheesy, but it goes full circle, baby. And, you know, we get a pretty comedic scene of the giants as we see the history of how they even started fighting on this island, which loops all the way back around to them fighting to see who got the biggest animal, which is really funny. But also, conceptually, it's kind of sad. Like, these giants have been fighting for so long that they don't remember what they were fighting for. They don't remember why they're here or what started it. It is looking at the concept of, of pride, this, like, need to one-up each other, to, like, be better than the other, that has resulted in these giants just losing everything they know about themselves. And as they leave Little Garden to go to Alabasta, Mami begins to get really sick. And, you know, we're already building tension. There's already a lot that's being juggled. We got Baroques and Alabasta and Buggy and Alvita uh, from the Grand Line that are coming and Smoker. And now Nami is sick. So who knows how that's going to turn out. And that was my experience with Little Garden. Okay, I heard the responses. I'm trying a different format, seeing how that works. I'm still trying to work stuff out. It's been very confusing. But you know what? We'll figure it out. We're figuring stuff out. And also, I don't have a script. I'm bad with a script. I'm going to be so much worse without one. You got to, you got to understand. 